when you come to the monastery to make merit. Remember, there's a difference between merit itself and acts of merit. Acts of merit are the things you do. Merit is a quality of well-being in the mind. You do things that are qualify as acts of merit, things like being generous, observing the precepts, meditating and developing thoughts of goodwill, to give rise to a sense of well-being, because you're looking for happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody. And happiness like that is rare. There's so many ways that people find pleasure in life that create a burden for other people. But being generous, being virtuous, meditating and thoughts, developing thoughts of goodwill, these things harm nobody at all. So you can take joy in the fact that your happiness is, is blameless. And that joy is what you then dedicate to others. You're hoping that they will share in the happiness too. Which means you have to get your mind in good shape, because sometimes we're making merit for people who passed away. And it's hard not to be sad. But you have to remember that you're doing good. You're doing the best you can for them. And you're sending this current of mind. You can't take the objects that you've given and send them. There's no post office that can take things to people who passed away. It's only the currents of the mind that can touch one another. So try to make the quality of your mind good. You're doing good right now. And you're willing to share that goodness. That willingness to share them increases the merit. And if the person on the receiving end knows and appreciates the merit, that becomes their merit too. This is one of the ways in which the practice is good for everybody. Take meditation, for instance. You get the mind to settle down, the mind gets rested with an attitude of goodwill. And when it's rested, it's a lot easier to think about doing good things, and it's a lot easier to resist the pull of greed, aversion, and delusion. Which means that other people don't have to be subject to your greed, aversion, or delusion. So even though it looks like we're just training our own minds, the benefits ripple out. And as always, it's things start with the mind. As the Buddha said, it's the mind comes first prior to everything else you experience. And things you experience are shaped by the mind. So you want to give them a good shape and put the mind in good shape so that you can do that. And when the mind is in good shape, then it's a mind of value. Because after all, when you're making merit, you want to send something of value. And we may think that the mind, the way that's scattered all over the place with lots and lots of thoughts, would be a valuable mind. But no, it's not. It's, a, the, it's like fruit in a market. If there's lots of durian in the market, the durian doesn't have much price. There's only one durian in the entire market, okay, that durian's going to be really valuable. In the same way, you're, when your mind is one, one with a breath, one with thoughts of goodwill, that's when your mind has value. And that's the kind of mind you'd be willing to share with others, yet the attitude, the quality of the mind that you can share with others. And they're sure to be happy to receive that. <laughs>